For this experiment, you will need 200 milliliters of cold water, 200 milliliters of rubbing alcohol, 100 grams of spinach, a blender, 30 milliliters of dish soap, and 10 milliliters of both meat tenderizer and salt, as well as a strainer and a measuring cup. So the next step is to first blend our spinach and what we're going to do here is pour in our 100 grams of spinach into the blender. You will also add in your 10 milliliters of salt as well as your 200 milliliters of cold water. When those are mixed in together, you will want to blend them in the blender until you have a soupy like texture. Once we are done blending together the spinach, water, and salt, we are going to strain it into our measuring cup. And this is to ensure that we don't have any other spinach pieces in our mixture, as well as to also measure the volume because we want to give the same amount of alcohol as much as our volume is. So here we will be measuring it with the measuring cup. And as you can tell, we roughly have around eight ounces or a cup. So we will note this and we will add the same amount of alcohol later on. Next, what we're going to do is transfer it over to our glass jar and we are also going to add in the 30 milliliters of our dish soap and the reason why we're adding this is because the dish soap is going to break down the cell membrane of the DNA spinach so then the spinach DNA can come out. Think about it like having a gate full of sand. When you open the gate, the sand will come out. That's essentially what is happening here. So we will add in our 30 milliliters of dish soap and let it rest for 10 minutes. So after the 10 minutes, we will want to add in our 10 milliliters of meat tenderizer. And this is just gonna break down the DNA further more than just the cell membrane. And it will make the DNA not mix in with the water so think about it as adding floaties to the DNA so it could actually float up rather than mix in with our water. So moving on to our last step which is adding in the alcohol as we recall back this is how much we had a volume with the spinach. So here I will just go in and pour in the alcohol into the measuring cup so I can get the same exact volume that I did before. Now what I'm going to do is transfer my mixture that I have here in my glass jar into a bigger bowl simply because it'll be much more easier to actually see the DNA rise up rather than having it in the jar but if you would much rather keep it in the jar that is okay too. So now what I will be doing is adding in the alcohol and this basically brings the DNA out. Here is a much closer look of what the spinach DNA looks like. I hope your DNA extraction has come out correctly and that you enjoyed the experiment and so i just want to take a moment to talk about the importance of dna so as we know dna is actually named deoxyribonucleic acid hence the long name that's why we have a simplified version you know the abbreviation dna so dna is very important and it's actually in every living thing so think about every person you've met, they have their own DNA, as well as plants. Plants also have DNA, and DNA actually helps determine what we may look like. For example, DNA may determine how tall we may be, what our eye color may be, and what color our hair could be as well. And it's the same thing for plants. It could determine if the plant is going to be tall or short, or if the plant could be a green color, or yellow color. DNA could often sometimes be seen in textbooks like this and as you can see it could also be seen in real life as we know from the experiment as this. 
So I hope next time you eat your spinach, you think about the DNA that you extracted and how it helped to determine what color the spinach was. See you next time on the Kitchen Lab.